We're about 30 miles north of Belfouche. We've been here since 1978. We bought the place then. The landscape is kind of rolling and it's all gumbo country. We run cattle and sheep and Cindy's the main, main help. We don't have any other help. It's uh, not real good farm ground. It's mostly just it's producing all it can, just growing grass. It's a harsh climate. We get pretty hot in the summer normally and uh, winters can get kind of long and hard. Bureau of Land Management land is intermingled with the deeded land and uh, you use Bureau of Land Management lands right along with your own. We try to leave as much grass as we can. I don't know, it's kind of the old rule of take half and leave half and we try to follow that. The wildlife we have are quite a few antelope and there's a few white-tailed deer around. There used to be mule deer, but they've left. And we have uh, some sage grouse. They flourish because we try to leave a little grass for them, something to eat. We have quite a little sage around for, for their natural habitat. So sage grouse in South Dakota, here we're on the eastern edge of their habitat and uh, they really rely on big sagebrush. They'll use silver sagebrush areas as well, but uh, sage grouse are a very unique bird and they'll be able to gain weight in the winter time as long as they have good access to Wyoming big sagebrush here. So it's very high in protein and they eat the leaves and seeds and they have adapted very well in order to thrive on that as well as pronghorn. Sage grouse are a unique upland grouse species. Uh, they're the largest grouse species in North America and they actually uh, do not have a hard gizzard uh, like other upland birds so they're able to easily digest plant material and aren't able to take advantage of uh, other seeds that other upland birds are able to. Through the Sage Grouse Initiative, it's, it's a lot of work of partnerships working with uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Partners for Fish and Wildlife, as well as the state agencies such as South Dakota Game Fish and Parks here in South Dakota. They have a private lands biologist that I work closely with, along with Partners for Fish and Wildlife. By teaming up, we can make our dollars stretch further and picking those areas and being selective of where we put our dollars of putting the right practices in the right place at the right time it can really benefit, again, sage grouse and all wildlife species. Some of the things that we see on Dan Connor's rangeland is um, it's very productive, it's resilient with drought, and it's very diverse too in its plant species composition. And he also has an excellent uh, big sagebrush plant community here, which is what sage grouse really need. And in South Dakota, we're right on the very eastern edge of sage grouse habitat. So this is a really a, a pretty special place. His riparian areas, especially along Antelope Creek, are in fantastic shape, great condition. Bank conditions are great, they're diverse, they're green throughout the year, they pond water. And uh, that's a, just a testament to his management. And um, also just the care that he takes, um, you know, to leave uh, grass behind at the end of every year. Dan runs a rotational grazing system here where he has a rest rotation type management system. And um, it's a system that's very beneficial to the grassland and shrubland resource here. But one of the issues is water reliability in this part of the country, and, it, and it's usually poor. A lot of stock dams are what we rely on. And if you're gonna have a planned grazing system with planned livestock movements and periods of use, you have to have reliable livestock water to make that work. And so um, that's something that we really worked with Dan a lot on to be able to continue that grazing management that he's, he's accomplished here on the place and, and be able to provide him that reliability was really big for us. And I hope for Dan too. I think the thing I enjoy most is watching the livestock, you know, see how they produce and watching the calves in the spring being born and, and just kind of like everything's being regenerated in the spring, it's, uh, it's enjoyable. Everybody worries about the livestock welfare and stuff and just about everybody, if they have livestock, they take care of them. You know, they, they like them, they're kind of like their family, so they take care of them and take care of them well and kind of like everybody to know that. 
Dan's um, addressed a lot of threats to sage grouse here, provided a lot of great, a great uh, habitat for sage grouse. And um, you know, he's done everything from removing high gate posts um, to deter uh, avian predators, marking fence where there's a high collision risk near a lack. Um, so, so Dan has done a lot and that in combination with his grazing management has really made this ranch uh, great for sage grouse habitat, great for sheep habitat, great for cattle habitat too. So he's really been able to pull it all together and it's kind of a testament to uh, strong work ethic and strong land ethic.